strong support crew. On the other hand, the Demons are or have split their first two opening games of the season, a loss versus Barry, as well as a win versus Southwest. Ian Martin, current uh, lead point leader, and leading rookie Vaughn Harris leading the offensive charge for Osh Weekend. As we take a quick look at the standings right now, you'll see a log jam up at the top. Barry, Osh Weekend, and Durham, each with two points, and they're in that order. And only one team between the Demons and the Surf Dogs will break out of that pack. So, as we get set for tonight's game, let's send it upstairs to Matthew Carrick and Stephen Stamp with a call. Guys? Hello, lacrosse friends. Welcome to Canadian Lacrosse League action. I am Stephen Stamp. I will be joined shortly by Matthew Carrick. He is just zipping through some uh, work on the side here. But uh, we are just about ready to go. As Daniel mentioned, the Durham Turf Dogs with a one goal win in their opener last week right here in Oshawa at the GM Center. And it came on a Jeff McNulty goal. He is there to... Uh, to score big goals like that, and he got it with 2.6 seconds to play. A beautiful quick stick on a great pass from Derek Hopcroft. McCrory and Harris line up, and Vaughn Harris, as he so often does, takes the opening faceoff, and the Oswegan Demons immediately go to the offense. They will set up, as you said, the loss in Barrie and then the victory in Southwest. This weekend, they're here in Oshawa. They traveled north to Barrie on Sunday for the rematch as this one goes off the back glass and it's going to be handled by the Turf Dogs. The Turf Dogs will come the other way. The Demons get all their traveling out of the way this weekend. Oh, what a goal! <laughs> Dylan Goddard from his side still takes the shot and gets it behind the starting goaltender Jake Henhock for the Oswegan Demons. Roll the Arby's highlight of the week right now. Here it is. Jake Henhock was not here last week so that is the first shot that we see him face, or at least I've had a chance to see him face, and doesn't go too well for him as Goddard takes a bit of a bump, lets it fly anyway, and as a goaltender, it can be a little tricky for you when the guy's at a funny angle and obviously didn't work out well for Henhark on that one. Ian Martin's going to win another faceoff. On the flip side of the schedule, the Durham Turf Dogs, after tomorrow, will have played three of their five home games, so you don't want to say in week two there are must wins, but these are the ones you want to get out of the way on your home turf. Well, we expect it to be such a competitive league this winter with uh, five very good teams. A uh, great game going on right now down in Paris, Southwest versus Niagara. Uh, that you can watch picture in picture, you can watch us both, but we have a penalty coming early in the game, and Oswegan's going to get a chance to tie things up right off the bat. Looks like a high stick being called by Grant Spees. He was, before the game, given his uh, ring for being the official of the year. Uh, last year, the reigning official of the year, he'll be the crew chief down there, along with Caden Pack and Mohammed Urshad on the floor of the officiating crew for this game. As the Demons set up their power play, it was a high sticking call, and this one, Thomas Hogarth picks that one off, and they've got, looks like Josh Wasson headed down the floor, pardon me, Jesse Guerin, as now it's going to be a five on three as he hustles to get back. And Ryan Masters in to make the save. And they'll try again. This time Hogarth going down. And that one intercepted by Joe Miracle. And Jesse Guerin, the leading scorer for the Turf Dogs, the most outstanding player in the league last year. And he is killing penalties, showing his lacrosse IQ and what a development he has made in his all-around game. Here's Joe Miracle. He rips that shot. And someone asked me this week, how he's, he's been so good for the Georgia Swarm and how come he's playing here, of course, on the practice roster now with the Swarm as they come in and it's gonna be a goal. I believe Mike Miller had slipped in there. Or Von Harris maybe, pardon me. Yeah, Von Harris, the uh, Rookie of the Week last week and uh, what a start he's had with this club. He does, of course, have a man cup with the Six Nations Chiefs where he is a valuable depth contributor and he is just gonna slide into the slot here and take the quick little pass from Tory Van Every. Um, just a, a little lack of awareness by the Turf Dogs as they let him slip right into the middle and Harris, very dangerous. And the thing with Howdice Miracle or Joseph Miracle, whichever you wanna call him, is uh, he, he, had, he did play fairly well for Minnesota last year, but they've just added so much talent. You know, Johnny Powell coming in a trade and, and uh, Jesse King in the, in the draft this year. They, uh, they just have a wealth of talent. Not to mention the 
20 first round picks they've had over the past couple of years. Goodness. Not sure what the exact number is, but it seems it's actually like not all that of far them. off. Yeah. <laughs> this this year was the second time within the last few that they've had four first rounders. And this year, of course, they were first, third, fifth, and sixth. And uh, boy, what what a chance to build your team. And they did it with Lyle Thompson, Randy Stotts, Chad Tutton, and Jesse King. That's an amazing group. And getting a fresh start down in Georgia as well, giving those fans. Something exciting to build their base off of. Oswekin comes after Masters one more time. An interesting play down the other way as Henhock decided to stay in his net. But a nice job by Elijah Print up to keep the play moving. This one's going to go off the defender in front and then go up into the seats. And the Demons will get a fresh 30 seconds here. 12 minutes to play. We'll play four 15-minute quarters. Stop time here in the Canadian Lacrosse League as Blue Hill. He sends it over to Ty Thompson, who had a great season opener we were out there on friday to call that one as thompson now looking to the crease and unable to handle that was josh becker and it'll be a crease violation and we've got a substitution call made by caden pack the technical official and of course the point of talking about what the georgia swarm have added is that it means players like how dice miracle yep. uh, come down and play in sealax and we've talked about it often that there should be a couple more teams in the nll they're looking for good venues and ownerships and fan bases to add some teams they want to expand but in the meantime there are a good couple of teams worth of players here in Sealax who definitely could play in the National Lacrosse League. Thomas Hogarth, who will be taking the ball for Durham, is a player who was drafted by Georgia this year and could very well be playing there. He's a terrific junior with the Peterborough Lakers. Well, we always look at the draft and we say, oh, man, it's always NLL guys that go. And then later on in the draft, it's the combine guys and guys who know the coach. But really, it's the, that, the next year or the year after when the next crop comes in. If that player can hang on to his job, he may return back to Sealax. Mike Triolo using all of his, I believe, six foot seven frame. Six eight, yep. Yeah, six eight. He will to uh, climb the ladder and get that one. Of course, Brooklyn Redmond this year, with a lot of their regulars going, improved his stock, was drafted by the Buffalo Bandits as walking in from the far side. I believe that was Mark Vradenberg who came over in a trade from Niagara in the offseason. They find Hogarth on the crease, who shoots just wide around Henhock. Doesn't hit him, so Vradenberg will come back down with it. Still on the power play here for the next minute off that substitution call. In home is Randy Martin, who is sitting serving that penalty for the Oswegian Demons. As they come over for Hopcroft, he lets one fly, as he's done so many times in this building. This one just wide, though, and it'll go for the over and back violation. And the Demons, 49 seconds on the clock. I was going to say could kill it, but they'll take a big chunk out if they do it properly here. Most of it. It's interesting, you know, Cody McMahon in his second Sealax game, we just saw him heading to the offensive door and then had to adjust and go to the defensive door. We'll talk about that in a minute. If you're new to Sealax, just get the rules out of the way. Meanwhile, this weekend killing some time. In the first couple weeks, those are the penalties that tend to get called it was I believe Cody McMahon taking the slashing penalty for off ball last week as well again one of the new guys adjusting to the new rules you can't slash or cross check off ball the way you can in the summer leagues and they really went over it with all the officials before the season to make sure it's being called that way um, you can't just wail on the cutters across the middle oh <laughs> the touch pass looking for Rob Clofer on the crease doesn't go so the shot clock continues to tick down. Garen to the other side of the crease. Goddard there and out of the box. Here comes Randy Martin, a two on nobody. And it's going to be just wide as it comes in. Masters elects to stay in the crease here. Back to five on five. Over to the far side, they continue to work out. Mike Miller threw everybody. Oh. oh, off the pipe, off the back of Masters. And he covers up to make the save. What a nice pass by Chris Atwood, the first we've seen of him as he missed their games last weekend. And he is in the all-time okay. leading scorer in Sealax. Big hit there, stepping up as Ashton Jacobs will lay the body. And then you go inside, here's Jesse Guerin trying to pass for, I believe that's Hopcroft on this side. Still manages the one-handed pickup and the shot, but it goes wide. So the Demon's aware of that. They'll let the shot clock expire before Elijah Printup can pick up and start it out for the Demons. Under nine minutes to play, seven and a half will take the official's timeout and the next dead ball after that. As here's a shot, this one off the pipe, and 
We almost got a souvenir. <laughs> nice play by Eric Shewell. Yeah, it was coming up close with Shewell on the bench. And uh, he had a pretty good game last week, but uh, got a few off-ball calls, and that's something guys still have to adjust to. Very the refs have to adjust as well. Yeah. I was talking to uh, the supervisor of officials, Wayne Paddock, and he was saying, you know, there was one where, uh, yeah, the guy, he was, Shul just bumped somebody, and it is like field lacrosse, and if there's a loose ball, you can hit the guys within nine feet. And uh, that one may have been miscalled, actually, on him. I thought that rule was taken out, actually. Well, they not according to what I heard last week. Played with it for the first two, first two seasons. It may have been taken out of junior and still in the pros. We'll have to clarify with our stats expert and aforementioned Wayne Paddock when we see him next. Down in the corner. Oh, another substitution penalty. Caden Pack. We saw, it's been a while since these were called. Not a while, but we saw a few missed ones last weekend. And Caden, I mean, he's been in the league pretty much since day one. And uh, right on it, he's not letting anybody cheat here. I think this one goes the way of the Turf Dogs. And Mike Triolo looks like he's got in-home duties here tonight. Yeah, no, I think it's going to be uh, Ryan McCrory, actually. And Triolo started to go as he was probably the guy coming off the bench. I was going to say, not often a guy gets a hat trick one week and is in-home the next. <laughs> Triolo with three goals and an assist in his Sealax debut last week. Good enough for uh, the runner-up for Rookie of the Week. Of course, runner-up to Vaughn Harris, who may have had the advantage of playing two games, although they were two fantastic games for Vaughn oh, Harris. Oh, he was very good in both, yeah. yeah. Definitely deserving of the award. I'm not saying he shouldn't have got it. Yeah, nine points coming into this game, second in the league to his teammate, Ian Martin, and uh, well, Martin's been awfully good too. Cool. And five seconds. This is one of these CLAC specific ones. Over half, you get 10 seconds still to get over half, but if you're killing the penalty, you have five to get over the next restraining line. And then and have to stay in there. Yeah, and then the over and back bumps to the restraining line when you're killing the penalty. So called for the five second violation where the turf dogs, Chris Atwood, Playing the low crease play. This is a new look here for the Demons as Joe Miracle on the crease on the other side takes a shot and it gets caught up in the leg of Masters. And now we've got a jousting match as Masters tries to corral it. They had signaled the officials' timeout. We'll stay here to see how this one develops. And it looks like all three striped jerseys will collide on that scuffle and we will take the officials timeout. Well and Chris Atwood the leading scorer in Sealax history not one of the more popular players with his opponents. <laughs> um, he does tend to chirp quite a bit. He's uh, definitely a talker and has uh, has riled up some opponents in his day and he's doing so again already tonight. And it was interesting last year he started the season with the Rochester Nighthawks and then came back to the Oswegian Demons. We thought man this is going to be huge for the Demons and didn't really take off. It was yeah. pretty much Tory Van Every for the majority of the season. Of course, they had Roger Weiss last year, Travis Hill, their captain, Wayne Van Every. Those are the big three missing from this Demons lineup. And as much as uh, Wayne Van Every and Roger Weiss, the offensive guys, the big guns, are two lefty forwards who, who brought a lot of potency, I think Travis Hill is the guy they may really miss. He's such yeah. a leader. As you mentioned, the captain of this team plays great defense, will get the ball up the floor, a penalty killer, and uh, just really a heart and soul guy. Well, and, and one of the comments I heard uh, earlier on as we check a replay here, this is of the goal, of the, oh, pardon me, the save, I guess it looked like from Ryan yeah. Masters on the cut there from Mike Miller. That was on the power play. And another here to the far side. And there were a lot of penalties last year taken uh, undisciplined from mm -hmm. some of the top guys. You're talking about Chris Atwood. Yeah. Tom Montour plays on the edge a lot. And when you take those veteran guys with the leadership and the experience they have, those are the guys who are now the leaders of the team. So how do they respond? And, you know, how does the team follow that leadership? If it's the same or, you know, is it time for them to kind of smarten up a little bit? Yeah, and I mean, you see t Tom Montour, a great example. Off the floor, one of the best guys you can meet. A great yeah. guy, funny, interesting, really nice guy. Um, on the floor, he is very passionate. <laughs> and it, it and goes over the top sometimes. Even last week in their opening game, he took a couple penalties that were kind of questionable. You know, not really penalties you want your captain taking. And it, it affected their results against Barry. I and mean, definitely led to some things, some opportunities for the Blizzard. Outside of the officials' timeout here, 
Come the Durham Turf Dogs down the far side with the ball. That one's in. And then a huge collision after the fact as that one sneaks in just past the left foot. Still can't tell who that was on the far side. That's Dylan Goddard with his second oh, goal of the boy. game, I think. And, and that's just a strange one. Goddard very quick, but just nobody picking him up as he ran down the far side. You could tell by the way he was running. He was kind of expecting at some point somebody to do something about it. He runs by Tom Montour, which is no easy feat as Montour is very fast, but you can see nobody comes to help. And Goddard's just like, all right, I'll just go the whole way and <laughs> score. Tom Montour, reigning transition player of the year, transition player of the week. Last week, two award winners on the Demon roster. And I mean, he was fantastic in Friday yeah. night's game. He would have won it based on that game alone, I think. And then he got a second one to show what he was made of as well. Here comes Von Harris, but in stride. Matt Croak gets back there just in time. And now it's a wall of green. Nice job by Croak, the youngster who uh, plays for the Peterborough Lakers, was with the New England Black Wolves, not on their roster anymore. And he is new to this league, and last week looked like he was sorting things out, but looking pretty comfortable, and he's killing penalties now. Yeah, still 33 seconds left in uh, that substitution minor. We've had a pair of those so far and a high stick already in this game. And Be interesting to find out if the plan was to have Croak out there or if that's just because he had to go back and play defense uh, on, on the reverse transition. I was going to say we'll see what happens when they turn the ball over, but at this point he'll probably head off anyways. Yeah. As Chris Atwood, there's where we're used to seeing him take the shot. It's a sub shot, skips off the turf, and this one just out of the reach of Jesse Guerin. Oh, but Henhock misplays it. Now they've got the trailer of Hogarth. Oh, what a save! Jake, Jake Henhock, pardon me. And we've got a roughing call behind the play. Tory Van Everett's been getting into it with a couple of different turf dogs, and he's going to go to the box for a roughing. But uh, Jesse Guerin, we saw him leak out earlier. That's one of the advantages of having such a great offensive player on the uh, on the penalty kill. And here you can see Henhawk, not known for his agility, really. He's more of a blocker, <laughs> but that's a pretty agile save. Thomas Hogarth had visions of his first goal of the year um, <laughs> with all kinds of net to aim for. And, just couldn't find it a bit away from Hanhock's stick. Let me tell you, the Demon Bench applauded the effort when it happened live. Joe Miracle just started banging his stick again when they saw the replay. <laughs> All eyes were up on the Jumbotron here, watching us show that replay to the fans in attendance. And man, it was a beauty. But power play time here for the Durham Turf Dogs as Garen's up top. Oh. oh, over the shoulder. What a find to get Matt Croak on the crease. Both sides now of the special teams ball is Matt Croak, he's taken on two Demons players, and has he come away with the ball here? He has. Yes, he has, oh my goodness. Oh, the fake pass, sold it, huge on Mike Miller that gets down to the crease, the ball movement here from the Turf Dogs. Back to the far side again, McNulty. Onto the crease, the shot and the goal from Josh Wasson, but credit Matt Croak. Yeah. Oh, Matt Croak just with a hard, hard working shift. I mentioned he looked a little out of his element last week as so many guys do when they first come into the Canadian Lacrosse League. 19, and with uh, 49, a bunch of guys 71. he has played for before in Peterborough, but some new teammates, but great ball movement. You're gonna just see how quickly it's going around the, the horn and then the skip pass over to Wasson who has the really the easiest part of that whole play it was tucking it into that empty net. Matt Croak, the biggest thing coming up with that loose ball. I don't think he's going to get an assist because it did go to the lefties over on the far side, but boy, he earned one. No, they called it 71, which is Jeff McNulty, and 49, Dylan Goddard. Yeah, His that's correct. third point of the night. I don't disagree. That you know, is the correct call, but my goodness, credit to Matt Croak, like we said, playing both sides of the special teams ball, whether by design or not comes away with a fantastic play and Goddard looking hat trick already early on the shot and oh, another one that gets away from Henhock but still manages to stay in the well, and, and that looked like an easy save for Jake Henhock it's not anytime you have Dylan Goddard coming down he usually scores when he's on his own another penalty coming for an illegal change to Durham I think it's I think it's a uh Door, door violation as yeah. opposed to with too many men as there's still five down there. They go to the crease. Ty Thompson trying to stay out. I guess doesn't realize he can reach in there and grab that, yeah. but it continues to bang around, and now we will get the call. It, oh, not quite yet. We may have something else. Uh, sticks are up and gloves are flying, trying to see who's in there. 
You can see Pete Rennie on the outside and Rob Clofer. Blue Hill is in there. Clofer making his Sealax debut today. He was a scratch last week and boy, he was out there on their first power play, setting up down on the crease. <laughs> Not something I'd expected to see, certainly from a new player. So here's a replay of how this gets started. Daniel Escalaro, our host, is standing by with our out of town scoreboard as here is, I believe, Goddard back down the floor. And another one, like you said, gets away from Henhock, but that is a difficult save. Daniel, what do you got? Hey guys, uh, a quick look at the Sill Apps Community Center. Southwest Cyclops up 8 6 versus the Niagara Lock Monsters. Dan Keen so far with the three goals for uh, the Cyclops. Back to you guys. A huge addition back to the Cyclops roster this year. And how about the man he took over for, the righty on that side for Southwest, Mike Burke, the game winner in oh. Colorado. He was stoked about that one in the <laughs> overtime win. The cellular for Colorado. goes too. That was that was <laughs> terrific. Just you love seeing that genuine emotion in a player. And uh, I'm not a big fan of the like staged celebrations, although I did like the the Terrell Owens Sharpie. <laughs> Got to admit, had a soft spot for that one, having it in the sock ready to go. But but the, the Burke celebration was just yeah. pure joy. Yeah. The amazing thing with Colorado right now, Adam Jones and Callum, Callum Crawford, the top two scorers in the league, John Grant is playing kind of a complimentary role. What a complimentary <laughs> player. <laughs> and he's been great I'd love, at it. I'd love to have him as my complimentary <laughs> yeah, player. No kidding. Goodness gracious. So it is, in fact, a substitution penalty. Only one that comes out of that scrum, this one, off the post. So the over and back will be negated. Also aided by the fact that, guess who? Jesse Guerin down the floor. Hogarth the cutter. Oh, he had the open side and just shot wide. Wow. Guerin gets under it, though. Hogarth's had two great chances and missed the net, and he's going to be kicking himself, and his coaches may be as well. As Guerin takes it to the far side. Going to bounce it back for Hogarth. Oh, man, Jesse Guerin. Oh, man, Thomas Hogarth. And Hogarth gets the goal and the glory. It's a nice play, and he does skip that one pass. Nice little half spin and come back around. 66 and 9. But uh, Jesse Guerin showed you why he's the reigning most outstanding player, why he was our offensive uh, player of the week. Like, that's just, that looks like a simple little bounce pass, but Keep in mind, it was between two defenders, both trying to block him off, and Guerin makes the perfect pass through for a shorthanded goal yet again. So we go back to the faceoff. A bit of a tie up there between, uh, I believe that's Ty Thompson and Patrick McRory, but they allow that to go by as the Demons back to the crease again. And all, all night, Ryan Masters has been all over that. As now we've got Kyle Jamison mixing it up. Yeah, with Eric Schul, they're pushing and shoving, and Schul just grabs his stick and says, hey, if you want to let our guys go up and kill time. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Knock yourself out. Uh, how much off ball is that? As, yeah. <laughs> as Patrick McRory goes after and gets flattened by three Demons players as it rolls away. Maybe that nine-foot rule is still in effect. <laughs> And the ball had just bounced away from him. Yeah. So I, I would still consider that on ball or just finishing your check. But. Josh Becker into the corner, back up top, over the shoulder. Von Harris rips one, and Masters saves that. It rolls to the half boards where Harris gives chase and now does corral it. Bypasses Chris Atwood to go up top as they work to the near side for Thompson. Down low, Ian Martin ripping the shot from the quarterback position and it's picked up by the Turf Dogs and immediately three of them rush out again as this is quickly becoming the modus operandi for the Turf Dogs as we go back to five on five lacrosse. And Hopcroft, he tried to find, I believe that was Ryan McCrory coming out of the bench and McCrory <laughs> sends that one way high. Hopcroft looking five hole in the bounce shot. And that one ends up in the stick of Henhock. And they almost had another break. Riley Campbell in his first Seahawks game, he was just signed as a free agent a couple days ago. And, and Eric Schull was thinking about the pass, but it wasn't really open. Smart decision while they were still shorthanded, but Riley Campbell wanted a chance. Halfway through the shot clock here, pick and roll between Thompson and Miracle. Miracle gets the shot, it goes off the backboards. Now running into it, Corey Thompson, he gets taken out on the far boards by Ryan McCrory. Back looking for Joe Miracle, and the shot clock does expire. Oh, big chunk of turf came up on that step, but they do get up for Jesse Guerin. Everyone's safe. 
And a big pick there from Cody McMahon. This one way high, and it finally comes down. We may have a souvenir. I might go get that if you want to carry things. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Garen with a great chance, directing traffic with Cody McMahon to set the pick for him to take that shot. Such a heads-up play. Triolo hiding on the near boards. Now he's going to set a high pick as the shot comes from down low. I kind of thought he was going to be the cutter on that play as now he does go to the net. The ball's up top again. Fresh 30, though, as it hit Henhock. Uh, roll from Triolo. He gets to the crease, takes the shot, and... Got a step on Ashton Jacobs, but a nice stand there by Henhock. One thing we haven't mentioned, the Sweeken Demons were late getting here. Their bus, mm -hmm. uh, they had to wait for a couple guys who were a bit late getting off work and then hit some traffic. So they didn't get here till on the floor till after 7 o'clock. Their normal warm-up routine, a little curtailed. And uh, that's probably part of what we're seeing in their performance tonight. So, so Durham needs to take advantage of this because the Sweeken should get better as the night goes on. And as we said, after Sunday, they don't need to worry about that. All the rest of their games are either at the ILA, the Meridian Center in Niagara, or uh, Sill Apps in Paris. Of course, that's where the other game is going on. You can check the YouTube channel for that, CanadianLacrosse.com, is where all the live streams are, all games live and on repeat. As Tori Van Every takes Becker out of the corner, and that'll do it for the first period. A great one for the Turf Dogs. They lead 4-1 after the first 15. We'll be back after this. Week two on the Sealax action from the GM Center. Teams switch sides here for periods two and three. First quarter in the books. And we are underway as Vaughn Harris wins the faceoff away from Mike Triolo. 4-1 lead for the Durham Turf Dogs. A pair of goals from Dylan Goddard. Josh Wasson on the power play. Thomas Hogarth shorthanded for the Turf Dogs. And Vaughn Harris on the power play the other way. They're going to call a moving pick here against Tory Van Every on Hopcroft. And the Turf Dogs come in for their first offensive set and it's going to be Hopcroft getting the shot and Henhock with the save. And you know, Tori Van Ever really took a shot at Hopcroft. Oh, around the world Ooh. by gear and almost finds home. Goodness gracious, they're pulling out the moves tonight are the Turf Dogs. He's already already oh. scored from his back. Pardon me, that was Goddard that did that early on as they look five hole on Masters here. And he makes that save. And pretty much after every play now, there's some kind of chop going on. 
Or yeah, the, not, yeah. not enough to draw a penalty, but the stick gets in the midsection and there's a little bit of jawing back and forth. Shouldn't say chop because they're not supposed to be doing that. I think they will draw a penalty at some point when the refs yeah, see, uh, see one. Oh, and there's there, one right yep, there. Right on cue. Did you enter that turf dog tell the future <laughs> trivia? Because, I mean, that was pretty good right there. Thank you. And it's going to be Grant Spies, reigning official of the year. And I believe, has he got Tory Van Every here? He has. And, you know, Van Every, a, a tremendous player. But he's out there playing, trying to play tough defense against a guy who is significantly smaller than him and Ryan McCrory. And you just have to be careful. I mean, you can't just cross-check somebody up near the throat. And, and expect to get away with it, especially when things have been going back and forth like we talked about. You know they're going to be watching. So another power play here for the Turf Dogs. Already scoring one on the power play, one shorthanded, like we said. Garen, he's oh. just going to snipe the corner. Oh, boy. You know, and Garen used to be quite a shooter, and he's really become known as a feeder of late, but uh, he can still At shoot. 21. And you can see how they respect the pass. Jake Hendhawk is watching over to his right, ready to move over because he's really thinking that Jesse Guerin is gonna pass the ball. And instead, you can see Guerin just shoots it. And uh, look, he's looking, looking, and then just pulls it to the near side. And you can see everyone looking to their right on that play. And Henhock coming to the bench here. It's gonna be Chase Martin coming in to back him up. Jake Lazor playing the third goalie role, early movement. Over on the line, looked like Carter Ashton took off. Ashton Jacobs, pardon me, who took off. And oh, tested early, <laughs> and it's a goal before they can even announce it here in the building. Yeah, Chase Martin started last Friday for the uh, Demons and was pulled for Jake Lazor, who did a pretty nice job. Now it's Martin's job. And I'll tell you, Chase Martin last year did a great job in the championship game almost single-handedly allowing the Demons to get back into it. And this time though, he doesn't have much of a chance. This is a nice little pass by Dylan Goddard as he just picks up the ball off the face-off violation. And again, unchecked as he runs down the floor and just passes it to Jesse Guerin. And they score again oh! before we're even done with the, pay with the replay. Why is Ron Messer even here? <laughs> Goodness gracious, Turf Dogs pouring it on. And Roger Chrysler, let me tell you, in that intermission timeout, he, he was, was hot. Oh, we could, we're behind the glass, and we can hear him echoing off the glass on the far side as not <laughs> the game that Chase Martin won. We look to see if they call timeout here. They do not as they go down to the crease. And Vaughn Harris <laughs> balls in his stick as the stick goes flying as Tom Montour immediately back to McCrory. As they come up looking for Garen, and they could have had another offensive set if he didn't misplay that. Tom Montour faking the shot, faking, faking off the back glass, finally, as Dylan Goddard's going to play it off the half boards. Pardon me, the oh. halfway mark, and Goddard slips that one through the legs of Martin. That's a goal scorer's goal as Goddard finds a spot somehow. He scored falling to his side earlier, and now he tucks one home. And what a play again. We've talked about Jesse Guerin. It it's often shows up on the score sheet. He had the seven points last week. He's got several tonight already. But what a smart play to clear out. Watch as Guerin is just, you're going to see him running to the far side of the floor to draw the defender's attention. And Goddard somehow doesn't get a lot on that, but finds the hole between the stick and the foot of Chase Martin. That is one that Dylan Goddard scores that I do not. <laughs> I know you don't, because I've seen your scoring oh. records. <laughs> I'm glad you've seen it, because I haven't. <laughs> it doesn't take long to read. <laughs> there's, a, there's a reason I'm up here. Let's leave it at that. <laughs> Tori Van Every in behind to Blue Hill. Ten seconds on their shot clock. As it comes from Van Every, Blue Hill jumps over the crease to play that one. So he does keep it alive. Tori Van Every all over on that right side. Rips one off the body of Josh Wasson. He finally does come in. Josh's brother Joe, a scratch here tonight, as is John St. John, Mark Farthing, and Nevin Sullivan for the Durham Turf Dogs. Looking for Triolo in the corner. It's going to be intercepted as the Demons, we talked about bus legs off camera in, in the break. As this one goes way high, and that's going to hit, again, something in the rafters. Oh, so the Canadian flag up in the rafters that time that it hit. Yeah. 
I don't think you're supposed to do that. <laughs> There's Joe Miracle, Ian Martin. And you kind of get the sense that the Demons need one here as Miracle wings that one off the shoulder of Masters. Garen and Harris get tied up at the restraining line. Give each other the sorry tap as they get up. And as Corey Thompson's going to come through, gets the shot away off the back glass. Ian Martin in the corner. Looks for Vaughn Harris, but he had Garen all over him. So it's down on the carpet. Hopcroft again with a one-handed pickup. He looks for Triolo, and again, it's just wide of Triolo. Goes down for Garen on the crease. Oh, what a move from Hogarth. Hogarth, who had a couple of chances early on in great scoring positions and was turned aside by Jake Henhock both times, has showed why he was one of the top rookies and one of the top transition players in CLACs last winter and a, a strong candidate to move on to higher levels as he takes this uh, pass from Jesse Garen. A nice, smart play and probably kept the toe out of the crease. It was very close to the line, but it looks like he did keep it out. And Jake Henhock's going to go back in and... Maybe they'll uh, have somebody go down with an injury and get Jake Lazor the third goalie to dress and give him a shot. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder if Mouse Henry bought his pads. 9-1. That, <laughs> that may be happening in the second half. This one, goodness gracious, all kinds of out of control. And Rob Clofer goes in hard on his man off the faceoff. Another odd man rush. But the late trailer to the far side was Tory Van Every who just ran through his man and now gives him a cheap shot and a couple bumps from Ooh. the floor, oh, and a butt end that goes unnoticed. And then, swing of the fist. I don't know who that is over there in the corner. I think, I mean, Tory Van Ever should probably get a major for the high stick as yeah. he brought the stick in the glove up there, but he did get butt ended in a very uncomfortable position. And, and nothing that's, called that's it. That's what the conversation is. Two for the slash, two for the rough. So they give him two for the rough for the second one. Probably a good call, but. We'll see it right here. And Just watch Patrick McCrory. There's the check by Van, by Van Every, and then the slash. Here, here and while he's down, watch this one. That is not nice, and he should have yeah. got. He should have got something. Well, that's what probably Tony, four. That's what Van Every was saying. Oh yeah. Oh, I don't blame him for being hot on that one. The first one definitely a penalty. The second one definitely a penalty. But in between McCrory, I, I would have given McCrory four for that one. That's just. I mean, well, that's a I, or five. I mean, a butt end. And I would have yeah. given Van every five for the yeah the, 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 the swing that he yeah, took. Yeah, me too. But uh, these guys are lucky we're up here. <laughs> <laughs> but down nine one, and you know we've talked. The yeah. goalies have switched a couple times. It's not on them. They've let in a couple yeah. of soft ones, but there have been a lot of high quality chances. Well, you can. It, it's very obvious the amount of running that's been done by the turf dogs here and just not matched anywhere near that by the uh, by the demons here tonight pardon me in the final 10 seconds here the shot clock as Garen does dish again they look for the crease and it's going to be intercepted by Kyle Jamison and there is almost no life on that demons bench right now as they're all kind of hanging over the boards a couple of sticks that batted against the boards trying to get the boys going but here comes Blue Hill cuts to the net and Ryan Masters thwarts that attempt. And I'll tell you, they've had some chances. Ryan Masters just looking very comfortable. Um, a goalie who moves reasonably well, but he's really more of a blocker, getting himself positioned. And uh, he's just been seeing the ball well and just knowing where the shots are coming from. Here's Blue Hill. Oh, oh. man. Blue Hill took the shot and went straight in. Then he got a chop from Masters. McNulty in his face now. And we've already seen, I know you said earlier that the officials were going to let those things go until they thought it was going to get out of control. I think the Tory Van Every play was where it started to go yeah. overboard, and now we're into dangerous territory here. Well, you know, Van Every with the check knocked um, knocked McCrory down at the other end, but it was when he chopped him while he was down Goal there. Goaltender down then, there has uh, got five minutes for slash. Oh, wow! My goodness, Ryan Masters with five minutes for a slash, and wow. Let's see. Hopefully, we can get another look at that one. It was a slash right almost to the Achilles part of the ankle. Here's, Here's Hill running him. Yeah. Masters. And right here, watch. Yeah. Yeah. And credit Blue Hill for standing in for that. I mean, <laughs> there were some guys I know that would have gone down and made sure he got five. 
But uh, Blue Hill's tough. Yeah, <laughs> he's a big, strong guy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm chuckling because Ryan McRory back to the box for a third time, and none of them have been for him <laughs> as he's the in-home serving the goalie penalty. So we're, where are we? Four on three four in and floor three. strength. Demons in penalty shot territory if they take one more as they will roll the box. Oh, vintage Chris Atwood right there. And Masters has been good. He's been in position, but you do not stop Chris Atwood when he's in alone like that very often. And uh, that's just a lovely pass for the shorthanded goal. And Atwood is back in Canadian Cross League action. Four. Josh Becker with the nice little pass on the run, going against the green. And Atwood just had a step on Triolo. And uh, Mike Triolo is learning what a lot of people have learned, a hard <laughs> lesson in Sealax. You stick within half a stride of, my, of Chris Atwood. Here comes Vaughn Harris in all alone, though as we're still four on three. That'll be for the next minute 37. And then we've got the double minor and then we've got the major on the board as Masters does get it to the far side. 10 second count is on as Grant Spies has it. It'll look like they got a cross in about seven and a half. They're as running low on the, uh, oh no, they're on the power play. Yeah. <laughs> I started <laughs> counting the five myself, yeah. but. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Vradenberg down to the crease. Back up top, they go for Hopcroft. Vradenberg again, threading the needle. I thought that was intercepted, but Triolo did catch it. Here's Hopcroft. Oh, that one goes high on Corey Thompson, but looks no worse for the wear as he comes off to the bench. Vradenberg out on the power play. He's still been credited. Oh, Von Harris, the beautiful swim move to get through. No shot and no penalty called as Vradenberg took him down. And he gets in the face of Grant Spies now. In the ear, I guess I should say, of Grant Spies. I was just going to say, Vradenberg still at this point credited with Josh Wasson's goal. Hopcroft hopefully will get credit for that one as he just <laughs> trots down the middle. And again, just a, a slow response by the Demons as Hopcroft cuts into scoring territory. And that'll take Blue Hill's penalty off the board, I believe. We're in the back half of the double minor, though. So well, let's see what they do here as Hopcroft just in all alone and shoots that one over top of Henhock. And it looks like Van Every is gonna be the guy that comes out and still discussing with Grant Spies. This is what we saw last year from Grant Spies. He came in a little bit late and here's, here's a look at Harris getting run over by Vradenberg. And he's looking to the ref, but now- He got the now, stick first, I think. Yeah, yeah, he got the stick. It's not really, he didn't cross check him in the back. So you're not gonna call a check from behind Look, on that. Looked like he got the stick check and the feet yeah. just got tangled on that play. I think that's a good play by Vradenberg. Yeah, I agree with you. And Harris, I mean, that's a, you're down 10-2 kind of play where you just want something to go your way. Yeah. Eight minutes remains here. We're about 30 seconds away from the next installment of Roger Chrysler turns red <laughs> at the official's timeout is the Demons down the far side. Ian Martin, he stops as, pardon me, Ty Thompson steps in and takes a shot. Rebound bounces outside the restraining line, still up for grabs before it's run into and picked up and kept alive here at under 10 to go as Atwood takes the shot and that's off the inside of the foot of Masters. Bounces all the way out close to center, but not over, as there was no over and back anyways. Atwood gets it back here. They are on the power play, 2.42 remaining in the major penalty to Ryan Masters for slashing, as Atwood works in. Back for Thompson, on the crease again, faking the pass across, and Masters went with that and made the save. Pretty smart play by Corey Thompson. He thought about picking that ball up just before mid-floor, but he would have gone over and back with his momentum, so he just waited till he was over center. Oh, that would looking pass, and then the cheeky little look back and the quick release as it comes back for Thompson, and Masters there to make that save as well. You called it. He's been so solid here in this first half. Faking to Atwood, now they go for real. He gets the double team, and then shovels the shot in. Rolled to Van Every. I think if he picked that up clean, he would have had a wide open net, but elected to go to Ian Martin. Van Every again, fakes the pass. Now the cutter is Blue Hill off the back of the boards. It gets caught up on the back of the net, and they can reach in there. And Hill's upset with himself because he caught that perfect pass. Oh, here we are the other end. McNulty, oh. That one got caught in the pads of Henhock. 
And another <laughs> anxious play in the demon crease. But Hill did have some open net to shoot at. Boy, they're having trouble hitting the net. Oh, and Vaughn Harris just popped out the door. And if this was in another period, that would have been over and back as Vaughn Harris stopped it from going over center. But here comes Riley Campbell. Like you said, the newcomer. He's got the right shoes to be on this team. He's going to circle the net, though. He wears those all the time. Makes them easy to spot. Reminiscent of when Shane Scott was in turf yeah. dog green. He had everything. The shaft, the head of the stick, and the laces. As Tom Montour lets a bounce shot go, Master saves that again. Looks to trap over top. And Tom Montour trying to get out of the way. He's going to end up with the loose ball as it bounced off. Looked like his shoulder or his arm to go to the half boards. So another power play set up on offense for the Demons. Just over half a minute left. There's Von Harris ripping the shot and it goes over top of Masters reaching for that was Joe Miracle and it got away from him and it will go for the over and back and it will be Demons possession. Thought they might have taken the officials timeout which there's 5.10 to go but apparently no one's noticed <laughs> and now Grant Spees has the call from Caden Pack as Ashton Jacobs takes his man out of the play and then a little extra with him on the ground. The Turf Dogs will get a fresh 30. And still as no officials timeout. Rob Clofer got up upset as Goddard the shot right to the glove and now we're going to get a penalty, a holding call and we'll see we'll see now if they take the officials timeout. If they do, we will send you to Paris for that timeout and give you a glimpse at the game between the Niagara Lock Monsters and the Southwest Cyclops, but it looks like they're going to play this out here as Van Every back to the box. Is that four for Van Every? The double minor, he took one more, and this yeah. should be four. So one more from before yeah. the expulsion. And we actually, if it hit half time yet, that, that I believe be. is five. Oh, they haven't called that yet. As five seconds remain in the major to Masters. So we're four on four now. And now we are five on five as Patrick McGrory sprints to the bench to get Guerin on for the power play. 10-2 in favor of the Turf Dogs. Guerin to the far side. All oh, cutting oh. to the net was Cody McMahon. How about the no-look pass from that far side? I believe that was Wasson. Yeah, it's hard to tell all uh, you know, the numbers don't really jump out at you when you're on the far side there. But uh, nice pass to McMahon in the middle. He tucks it home and Boy, the Turf Dogs just keep pouring it on. And a good idea because you can score a bunch of goals in a hurry in this league. That's a great pass. Just looking back to Jesse Guerin like he was going to throw it back up top. You have to believe eventually the Demons are going to get their legs. And when they do, it's going to be their turn to pour it on. But at least for now, the Turf Dogs content to run away with this one. I passed Jonas Dirks on the concourse and I said, look, you had a close, exciting game on Saturday. I said, I want to call one of those tonight. And he said, no, no, I'd rather be up by four or five. <laughs> I'm sure well, he's Jonah, thrilled being Jonas, up by nine. <laughs> how about nine? <laughs> four and five. Well done. Thank you. I took you long enough. Goodness. <laughs> I'm just shocked that <laughs> you did that without the abacus. Oh, I had the abacus going. <laughs> There's an abacus for that. Here's Vaughn Harris. Gets a pick from Martin. They find the cutter in front. Shovel shot by Mike Miller. That one goes wide. And Oswekin's oh, just trying everything and anything they can. That will be called over and back. And they'll allow this one to roll in the corner for Ryan McRory. Oh. He, he tries the no-look pass to the man on the crease, who was Vradenberg, and it bounced off the body of Ken Aaron. Yeah, Aaron just knocked that one down. And I think that's one Vradenberg would like to have back so they had a chance to set things up there. But the big trick, Durham has been known to be prone to giving up some runs the other way. This weekend will come out, and it's easy to get complacent with an 11-2 lead. So the key in the second half, we have a penalty coming right now to Pete Rennie. There's a shot and a save by Masters, but you know, can Durham stay sharp as they come out? Masters comes out and takes another chop. Henhock he could have had one there. Now realizing there's the penalty on, so he sprints to the bench, and Chris Atwood will come out. Gets the pass from Vaughn Harris. 
Chris Atwood with the C Atwood. Of course, oh. last year was Chris. Oh, what a play from Vaughn Harris. Masters is down and a tug from Hopcroft. This will be the second penalty. There should be a whistle. It's not going to matter as Garen hangs on anyways. And Rennie's going for a, slot, a trip. And, and Hopcroft a hold. going for a hold. 240 left in the half. We'll we may never get 22 the on the hold. Out. 23 on the trip. Uh, so Rennie called for the trip, the original penalty in the front when he yep. took down Vaughn Harris. Yeah. And uh, they've got 22 on the board. It's definitely 20 and 23, though. Yeah, sorry, it was Corey Thompson, not uh, Vaughn Harris. And then yeah. Hopcroft at the end is just going to grab on right here on Josh Becker. And both relatively easy calls, I think. Yep. But to finish my point, yeah. the C Atwood for Chris. I remember when Craig Atwood started the season, he had the Craig Atwood as if they knew Chris was coming back yeah. or, or hoping he would come back. And this season, he's just got the flat C, so... Craig's been bouncing on and off the roster, so yeah. I don't know if he's going to be back. I was I mean. going to say, I don't know what that says about his brother or yeah. his expectations, but we did see him last week in the game uh, in Southwest as Miller will now pick it up. Two minutes left in the half as Tom Montour goes for Joe Maracol, who snipes over Hogarth, and that'll do it for the first penalty. Yeah, that one was coming. I mean... These demons can shoot. 20, they, uh, 40, at 60, some 30, point, 35. They're going to put that one behind Ryan Masters. He can't keep them out forever. And the uh, Hopcroft actually is being released. The second penalty. Well, and, they uh, both went in on the same whistle, so yeah, at that point you, you can choose one. which one. Montour with the beautiful pass across. And how nice Miracle just fires that one home. A nice high to high rip to uh, make it 11 to 3. And might not seem like much, but. Every goal you can get here late in the first half gives you a better chance when you start to try and mount a comeback in the second. Chris Atwood fakes to the far side, goes for Harris. Back to Atwood, to Miracle, to Van Every in the corner. Miracle and Atwood again. Atwood just gonna shoot oh. through, <laughs> through the box. Pass the double team and scores. My goodness. Well, and the thing, Riley Campbell and Mike Triolo, they're having a chat, but they were both out go. quite high. I was thinking, <laughs> you know, these guys 77 are, and 20. Uh, so Miracle with the assist on Atwood's goal, just returning the favor, but and no from, uh, sorry, Atwood on Miracle's goal, but um, I mean, just a, a beautiful shot by Atwood who has these defenders out pretty high on him. I was actually gonna comment on how far out the top of the Durham penalty kill box was and uh, Atwood just makes it irrelevant well the first Atwood goal it was Triolo that got beat around him so well. he learned his lesson coming in tight and <laughs> makes no difference <laughs> Atwood's just one of the great shooters this league has seen here's Ian Martin inside the restraining line Vradenberg harassing him Von Harris elects not to go for the ball gets flattened as Vradenberg comes out Montour on him and Montour the huge push Vrainberg goes airborne, can't get the shot on net. As it's now going to be Demon's ball with just over a minute left in the half. Vaughn Harris down into the corner. Blue Hill looking for Montour who is cutting through. And Blue Hill has to give chase as Goddard comes in. With Ty Thompson, goes for McNulty whose shot goes off the shoulder of Henhock. What a shift for Montour from one end back to the other on defense and up. And that, if that pass had got to him, he was in a good chance position to bury it. But Goddard baited Blue Hill into the pass and picked it off. Atwood had his pass tipped. Now corrals it. A couple chops for good measure. Comes in for Tory Van Every, the corkscrew shot. And the chop in the crease as Becker gave a shot to, I believe, Pete Rennie there. 22 seconds. We'll see if the Turf Dogs want to call timeout. They probably won't with the delayed penalty as the shot now comes in and Henhock touches up and we will get the slashing call as the ball carrier was in the crease and we'll look to Matt Giles, see if he wants a timeout now. Five on four, six on four. Does it make a really big difference? Yeah, I don't, I don't think they're going to pull the goalie, but I mean, you might as well use your timeout. You get the one each half anyway, yeah. but... Um, they're going to just let the guys go. I mean, things have been working pretty well. You're up 11-4. to four. No kidding. Why disrupt it? Just let the <laughs> flow continue. Uh, Hogarth will start up top with Hopcroft and Triolo, the other righties. And then, of course, Guerin naturally will be out there down low, though. And uh, Vradenberg up there joining the power play. 
Vradenberg and Triolo as they cycle the righties. Hopgroff now backing out, and Vradenberg, his shot goes wide. Big reach from Triolo, can't match that one, and it will be the horn that ends a fantastic period for the Durham Turf Dogs. Oh, to be a fly on the wall of the Oswegian Demons dressing room. Well, and you know the thing, Roger Chrysler was fairly quiet during that second quarter, kind of standing back. I think he's just waiting to let it all build up and let it out at halftime and try and wake his team up. Yeah, we definitely heard it in that first intermission break. Mouse Henry, Roger Chrysler getting the thesaurus out here before they figure out what words are going to be used in the dressing room. I believe Daniel Escalaro has tried to make his way downstairs. Looks like he, he was going to try and meet with Matt Giles. And we'll see if they catch up as we'll stay with you. Tom Montour, where's the sea? Goes to Grant Spies, asks for an explanation for something before heading to the room. But yeah, they'll uh, have a discussion. Probably checking on the Josh Becker penalty late in the quarter there, of course, with uh, 50, uh, as he scored just 15 seconds left to go. We're going to take a peek at the, the statistics of Mike Triolo. Again, the key statistic for him is that he is 6 feet 8 inches tall, playing a transition role, taken by the Bandits, 27th overall. And, um, you see, his, he was actually a pretty good scorer in NCAA. We're going to go down to the floor where uh, Daniel has Matt Giles. Uh, they are on the bench. Go ahead, boys. All right, guys, I'm downstairs here with the Durham Turf Dogs head coach, Matt Giles. Now, Matt, with the score you have right now, 11-4, to 4, what has been uh, the major uh, game plan for you guys tonight? Um, I think uh, the major game plan is to, to, be, to be able to compete a little better than we did last week. I thought last week uh, we were a little flat-footed all over the floor. We're trying to compete and pick up some more loose balls. All right. What changes have you made uh, from last week's game heading into tonight? Uh, just staying hungry. Uh, owning the front of our net is, was a big difference. I think uh, they got a lot of lot rebound goals last week that we're trying to contain right now, and we're doing a good job of it. All right, and uh, what's the plan for uh, for you guys uh, heading into uh, the second half of, uh, of this game? Uh, to make sure we stay focused on what we're doing, don't get distracted by what they're doing. Uh, games like this can get out of hand, so uh, we just got to make sure we're focusing on what we're doing. All right, I won't keep you too long, Coach. Uh, it's time to head inside uh, with the boys and uh, plan for uh, the second half, but thank you very much for joining Thanks a lot. All right, 11-4 is the score at the half, ladies and gentlemen. Durham Turf Dogs ahead as we uh, head into halftime. We're throwing to a quick break. You're watching CLS Across on the JVI Sports Network. We'll be back. What a little individual effort here. Watch right now as we see 
What a goal and what a game changing goal. It's Edwards just finding an open space and when he does, quick release. And now they still have time to put another one home. 22 seconds remaining in a deadlock game. At nines. Edwards wins the draw. Flip pass. Edwards gets it back, but he couldn't control. Loose ball battle behind the net of Crowley. Tim Edwards is the lone, lone guy that looks like he has possession. Battling for it. And now. We may actually have an interference call. Possession, though, in favor of Southwest. They get it up the floor. Three on the clock. Corbett wants a shot. And a penalty coming. Something the Cyclops hoped would happen if they didn't. Didn't get a goal, and they drew the penalty. So Niagara heads to the penalty box at the end of the third quarter, but at the end of 45 minutes of play, it's 9-9 right here at the Syllabs Community Center. The dance scene from Oshawa, Ontario, providing our halftime entertainment here at the General Motors Center. Six and a half minutes left in our halftime break. It's an 11 4 score in favor of the Durham Turf Dogs. Our thanks to Spencer Tangay and the crew out at the Syllabs Community Center. They have just finished the third quarter out in that game. It is tied 9 9. More from the dance scene from here at the GM Center in Oshawa.
stick on that, but they went right over top of the netminers. Connor Dangle, of course, as I mentioned earlier, one of the shorter netminers in this term in this league. Danny Kell goes only about six feet. Whereas Grant Crowley at the other end is about six foot four. One of the bigger netminders. Here comes. Tynehouse gets it down low to Fowler. Fowler, the right-handed shot. They're strong right here with three right-handed shots. The Fowler and they score! Before the announcer could even announce the penalty, they put the penalty off the board and now we're deadlocked at 10. 10-10 ten, ten in the score. As here's what happened there, the quick power play look for the Niagara Lock Monsters. They just start cycling the ball, and they open that quick lane for Corey Fowler to walk right in from the top. So quick rotation and a quick goal. And all of a sudden, we're tied at 10. Face off one back by Southwest, but Reed plows right over Curran, who just came out of the box. Still looking for that loose ball. It's going to be picked up by Matt Spanger. Spanger has full control, settling it down on the defensive side of half. Up to Jordan Dance. Dance looking to go to the middle. Fakes a shot, and he scores! Long outside blast, beats Connor Danko as Danko wants that one back. Danko really thought he had that one low, as this is the 11th goal now as we take a look as this just a quick release through the traffic, and it went on the left side of Danko, right under his left pad. So that outside blast through the screen, Danko may not have caught it at the last second, and it's behind him to, for a one goal lead once again. Corbett wins the draw, and now it's picked up by the Niagara Lock Monsters. That's Dustin Gatt, number 89. In there helping Brooker Muir. Gatt and Muir are the only two Lock Monsters in there. Also now we have a three on three battle. Right in front of a few fans that brought some green and yellow signs to tonight's game. Supporting their hometown Southwest Cyclops. Picked up by Dustin Gatt. Battle continues now in front of the corner. And now Southwest has possession. They flip it up. Here they come again, Kranz. Comes in hot, no shot, as that's wide of the net. Danko tried to step out and give some help, but that's right in the possession of the Lock Monsters. Stretching the floor, couldn't connect with Brooker Muir, and Matt Spanger just has it. Matt Spanger, they get it to the middle of the floor. Here comes Southwest back the other way. Patton spins away from trouble. Muir's the only one applying pressure. Muir keeping Patton to the outside. They get it up, though, to G. Francesco, number 32, the left-handed shot. Far side, long blast, but a penalty's coming, and it's two penalties, actually. Both teams are sending a man off. Muir is going to the box, and so is Patton. They're going to each get slashing violations. So with Patton and Muir off, we'll play five-on-five five lacrosse. Excuse me, four on four, rather, four on four lacrosse. Muir and Pan each gets two minutes for slashing with 11.58 to go here in the final quarter. Here's Di Francesco. Thank you once again to Spencer Tange with the call at the Syllabs Community Center. This is Jesse Guerin reaching over the shoulder as he has the Turf Dogs on top. That was the fifth goal, the go-ahead goal at this point after it's 11 to four. After the first half of play here at the General Motors Center, they're in the fourth quarter. 
out in Paris. Matthew Carrick, Steven Stamp, and Daniel Escalara here with the call for this one. And I mean, 11-4. 11-4, it's a, uh, I don't know, we, we kind of talked all first half, Stephen, about uh, the Turf Dogs. Could they come back? What kind of comeback would they mount? The Demons. Uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. And uh, I don't know, your thoughts? Uh, I, I think we're going to know in the first few minutes because they, if any time, you know, you have a first tough first half, they uh, should be coming out here. They're going to have heard from Roger Chrysler what they want to happen. And they should be fired up, ready to go. They're on the power play. No, they're shorthanded. I take it back. <laughs> so, I, I, you know, a penalty kill would be good. They just have shown very little life. And when they've had any chances, Masters has been solid. Um, interesting point that uh, Durham, with a run of goals today... Eight straight today. They scored seven straight at one point last week. They are having some huge runs of success this season. Is that Chris Atwood out of uniform and gear sitting and watching? There's five guys who've come out of the room and they're sitting watching the game. Wow. Yeah, there's... Uh, and uh, it's a short bench. Only 11 runners coming out for this second half. I don't know if that's white flag given that Barry's coming up on Sunday or if that's... Uh, Black flag, as in you guys are in big trouble. Yeah, I think it's a bit uh, of each as we get a goal here. 12 4, sorry. Tucked home on the uh, quick stick at the crease. Power play goal. and Yeah, I guess 12 runners actually because there was the man in the box, four on the right, floor, sorry. and then uh, seven in the, in the, on the bench. But yeah, apparently the effort not really appreciated by Roger Chrysler, and he's sending a message. And They're gonna have uh, to take the go train home too. <laughs> I, you know, it'll be interesting. You look over and kind of see a couple of the guys smiling and texting, and and I wonder if that's what he wants to see out of them. I uh, would want to no. see some contrition and paying <laughs> attention to what's happening on the floor. Yeah, you guys better be taking notes. Anyways, it is uh, interesting times here in. The GM center, Jesse Guerin again, his fourth of the game. Wow. We've got him for up here is. Well, it's on the official score sheet, four, uh, four goals and four assists four now. Four. So Guerin trying to be the uh, offensive player of the week for week number two of the Canadian Lacrosse League, getting his vote in early, I think. Well, and the beauty about it is he's not actually trying for that. I know you're saying he's his effort's going to make that happen. He's just playing lacrosse yeah. and letting it take care of itself. This one skips away from McNulty. It's interesting. Year one of the Canadian Lacrosse League, five years ago, before the initial draft, you and I had kind of spoke, and I said, you know, who, who's going to be good? Who's going to be all right? And you said the combine. Jesse Guerin was fantastic. And it took him three years to show up in this league and play. Got his first game in last year and ended up being the uh, MOP. And yeah. uh, now, I mean, eight points here tonight. Uh, you were bang on the money. Just took you a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's, he's just a tremendous lacrosse player. The thing that amazes me is he was always an offensive guy and, and didn't have a lot of interest really in defense. This is a chance. Oh, and, oh uh, man. Croak had a chance for a goal there, but he has been a great defensive player. He was last year, and he's killing penalties now and, and doing a really nice job of it. Dive through there from Vradenberg as he was taken down from behind, still trying to get the shot away. Boy, well, I'll tell you, Durham not showing a lot of jump either. Like They're just looking like they're kind of going through the motions a bit here. I mean, they score the power play goal, but <clears throat> it's, it's going to be hard for them to be motivated to play hard with a 12-4 lead and a, and a short bench for the Demons. Well, I watch Riley Campbell running around out there. He's going to get the loose ball. This is the time of the game where guys like that who aren't the stars, yeah. you know, you start thinking about stars who may get, you know, a little bit more time off. Show us what you can do. And not, not necessarily running up the score, but it's audition time. I guess we got one wrong. Is there's Chris yeah. Atwood taking the shot? Yeah, mm -hmm. Atwood with the shot. And it, it's funny because, you know, you, you so often a, a coach will say, you know, we just didn't have the effort. We had some guys not pulling their weight. And you don't always get them named. You don't necessarily find out. It's not hard. Just look who's not playing in the second half. And <laughs> I would guess those are the guys Randy Chrysler, Roger Chrysler was really not happy with. Well, and guys hear that too. And they, they know 
Yeah. Yeah. The guys on the bench know if it's somebody else, yeah. even if the guy who's not doing it doesn't. Usually the guy who's not does or does know, but uh, and the other guys will let you know if, if you don't figure it out. That's part of the leadership and and part of the guys taking care of each other before the coach has to step in. But definitely not the effort, like we said, Roger Kreisler and, and Mouse Henry expect in that first half is down now by eight. Durham Turf Dogs looking pretty strong here. Oh, oh! And then the strip from Ryan McCrory, and with the score the way it is, you talk about uh, intensity. You talk about playing with a purpose. You yeah. talk about things like that. It's important not to confuse that with uh, over aggression and yeah. know, things that start to get out of hand. Yeah, terrific play by Ryan McCrory, making the effort in the four check, and that's exactly the opposite of what I was saying. It can be hard to keep that effort up there, and uh, that's just a hard work play. By McCrory. Cody McMahon works around his screen, gets a shot away late in the shot clock, so he'll peel back to get in defensive position. One of the beauties of uh, Canadian Lacrosse League, these de defensive guys that got to step up. And of course, Thomas Hogarth, one of the top defensive players, the top defensive player last year in the Canadian Lacrosse League. Four goals late in the season in a game out in Southwest where Durham was shorthanded without a lot of their top guys as he was called upon. And well, and he played well in the offensive zone all year. I mean, he would go up and be on the power plays. and It's another nice save by Ryan Masters. I mean, it's 12-4. You might think this weekend hasn't had chances, but they have. Yeah. And, you know, one goal here, here or there, a couple quick ones. Opening night ever in Sealax again from going back five years Chris Atwood a natural hat trick in 58 seconds yeah so that would put us at what 12 7 you're down by five with a half of lacrosse to play and he's the kind of guy I mean still tonight he could just decide he wants to light it up and there's nothing anybody can do about it yeah when he really is on uh, he, he is awfully tough to stop and you know a couple of goals already tonight this one intercepted by Kyle Jamison he's got a pair one shorthanded, they were down five on three when he scored his first, and then the power play marker later on, the back half of a five on three going the way of the Demons. When he scored, they were five on four. Here's Von Harris shooting one down low, and that's gonna get through the five hole. Masters looks around for the gap, but there was just enough room in between the stick and the leg. In this case, we did see a bit of, I thought, flat-footed defense by the Durham Turf Dogs on that. They run back, you know, they're up 12-4. And, uh, and I thought it was a little bit, so just look at, as you see, Harris going nine, in. 72. The other Durham players just kind of standing around. Uh, Pete Rennie there has his guy tied up. So, you know, that's he's doing his job, but everyone looking a little bit lethargic. And uh, it's a challenge for everybody when you have a, a game like this. I mean, you and I have to make sure we're paying attention and staying sharp, right? It's uh, it's easy to fall into it, and especially when we've got another game going on that's so exciting down in Paris where it's 13-10 for Southwest. Oh, goodness. I wouldn't mind watching that one, too. Lock have to wait till it's archived and go watch it. Lock Monster's in danger of going 0-2 after the season they had last year. That's uh, not good news, but, of course, their home opener coming up on Sunday. Spencer Tangay will be down with the call of that one. You'll be here tomorrow as the Durham Turf yep. Dogs welcome somebody. Barry's coming in, I think. <laughs> Barry is coming in. <laughs> and then Barry will be at home on Sunday Barry playing knows. these Oswegian Demons, oh, as you man. alluded to earlier. Those two, those two have a fantastic rivalry going. Here's Dylan Goddard. <laughs> What's that, five? Four. That's four for him four. to go with a couple of assists. Goodness. and uh, from Hop That's actually back three back goals back. for Goddard. Oh, so where did I get four? Who knows where <laughs> you get things sometimes, man. <laughs> I'm just going by the score sheet that's on the computer. 49-20. Uh, assist for Hopcroft. He's having quite a game himself. With the, Well, that's his first assist, hard to believe. Yeah, great game. Riley Campbell with and a nice... And, and Hopcroft miss, shouldn't get that one. That's I think Campbell. They miscredit it. Yeah, that's give that one to Riley Campbell. That's his first point in Sealax, and he deserved it. They have, we'll see if they've, yeah, they have corrected the first half goal that they originally gave to Mark Vradenberg when it was Josh Wasson putting it home. So we'll let them know about that assist too. Here's Kenny Aaron. Where's Kim Squire when you need him? <laughs> Once ran down the bench when he was, I think it was he with the Peel Avengers at that point to make sure a teammate got the correct assist. It yeah. wasn't even him. Yeah. 
Heard it over the PA system, announced incorrectly. And you want Riley Campbell to get the game ball, that game ball, because that's uh, his first assist. Yeah. And jump ball here. It's going to roll away into the stick of Tom Montour, assuming we take the official's timeout, which I'm not sure that we do anymore. <laughs> but uh, we'll try and check in on that game out in Paris one more time as Rob Clofer runs down. Oh, the back check there from Tom Montour. What an effort by Montour. Short yeah. bench. He's been running up and down the floor all game. Goes back after Clofer and knocks the ball away with a clean check. Can a guy win transition player of the week if he loses by like eight or nine? Mm. Five games, I think somebody's going to do something that may earn it, but, yeah. but boy, Tommy Montour has been good. A full slate. We didn't even get to talk about Sunday. The light is on, and there it is. Officials timeout once again to Spencer Tangay. Niagara Lock Monsters, Southwest Cyclops. Enjoy. In Paris. All right, just over four minutes left over in Paris at the uh, Celaps Community Center. Southwest Cyclops holding on to a 13-10 lead. And here's uh, the feed right now from Paris. Some doing some magic on the far side, the left side of your screen. So now he's just going to simply step around, use the seal to his advantage, give it back. And when he does, watch for the outside shot right here. Just one step, quick blast. Danko, you see well out of his net but he can't get the right arm on it. So Connor Danko trying to settle his team down and settle himself down as he's led now in six goals. Come back the other way, they can't beat Grant Crowley. Crowley's been absolutely fantastic in this later part of tonight's game. Here comes Southwest, that's Curran. Current number 79 gets it up top, and now it's Jordan Dance. Dance, simply trying to find it. Finding some room, Dance gets it up top behind the back pass to Curran, couldn't connect. Picked up by the Lock Monsters, and they're just going to get a full change. Coming out the front door, four fresh legs, eight fresh legs rather, I should say. Four fresh bodies coming for the Niagara Lock Monsters. Here's Newfeld. Newfeld. Getting it up to Coil, the blast, twist shot right into the stick of Crowley who goes down to make the save. Grant Crowley stepping to his left, goes to his right, makes the pass. Here comes Jordy Jones-Smith, loses it. Back comes Niagara, Tim Edwards. Edwards in his first game, gets around the netminder but he can't beat the post. Everything just going in favor of Southwest right now as Niagara unable to beat Grant Crowley. Newfeld picks it up, looks for Edwards down low. Edwards has it. And here's 88, they need a shot. They have 22 on the clock, but only 2.45 to go in today's game. Down low into the corner, they backpedal, back up top. Our thanks to Spencer Tange. As you can see, a four goal lead for Southwest uh, down the stretch out in Paris. The rematch of that game goes Sunday afternoon in Niagara at two o'clock PM. Spencer Tange will have the call of that one as well. If you live in the Barry area, tune in for Stephen Stamp and Ron Ruff on Rogers Television up in Barry, as they'll call the Blizzard and the Demons, or myself. If you are not in that viewing area and you want to check out the Sealax webcast, 13-5. Here is the Demons on the offensive again from up top. Oh, Becker, that one goes. Off the foot, it looked like, of Hogarth. He drops, but will stay on the floor as he tries to walk that one out. Took one step toward the bench and just circled back to his defensive position. And I'd go right at him right here, but they don't have time as the shot comes from Chris Atwood. Usually a good play. Now Hogarth will go to the bench as Hogarth comes out to apply the four check on Henhock. Wow, and as Henhock came out of his crease... <laughs> I was going to Were you thinking the same Jesse Heron could yeah. run him? And wow, would the things have exploded. I think if this game's a little bit tighter and maybe we didn't see a five minute major against Masters, perhaps he does. Oh, well, as Atwood takes a chop and now goes nose to nose with, I want to say Hogarth, but I don't think that's him. I think he's on the nope. bench. It's Vradenberg. 
as the ball goes the other way. Triolo out of the corner, rips a shot. That one wide, and another one way high into the seats as the Demons will get started back. That's a play where every offensive player, when they see that goalie come out, their eyes get super wide, especially if they played hockey because <laughs> for about 15 years they've been told you can't touch them, and they really, really want to. Triolo with that ball, and it, you know, we were talking earlier about Tom Montour and playing the role of, of the captain here and, and how you go about it, especially if you're a pretty fiery guy. The play we saw earlier when he rushed down the floor to strip Rob Klopfer yeah. of the ball is how you become a, a cat, or is why he is the captain. Goddard will go back into the corner here. Up top again, Watson way up top as Ashton Jacobs is on him. Kyle Jamison now spying the ball carrier as it comes over to Goddard. He rips a shot, and Henhock turns that one aside. Goddard catches a piece of the stick, it looks like, of Montour, which causes the ball to go up into the screen, and it's a fresh 30 for Durham, but no one to help Goddard as everyone had gone to the bench, and he's going to cough it up here for Ashton Jacobs. Probably would have been well advised to just hang on to that for a second, but he would have been buried if he did. Here's the shot from Tom Montour over top of Shuel. Eric Shuel had a great rookie season last year for the Turf Dogs as well. I think they had, oh. Oh, I was going to say about three candidates for rookie of the year, but Ty Thompson, he rips another one. That one goes through Masters who went down low. Drops down sidearm, and Ty Thompson, who can definitely shoot, has a couple assists already, but part of the... Becoming legendary Thompson family, a cousin to Jeremy, Heine, Miles, and Lyle, the uh, four Thompson brothers in the NLL. And that is just a great shot. And Ty has had some time in L NLL camp, and he has a heck of a shot from the outside, just finds a hole and pulls him within seven. Oh, what a pickup by Von oh, Harris, oh. the next shot. He was looking top corner, and it goes off the shoulder of Masters. I think the bus legs are gone now for the Demons as they start to... Pour it on, maybe too little too late though as Von Harris dances around from the outside. Here's a shot from Becker down low. Oh, what a play from Harris on the crease. Von Harris, as we mentioned last week, rookie of the week, and, uh, and, and a dab. That was we a, catch del the dab. a delayed dab, but it we'll was. It. That's a beauty, and they're starting to get some good looks, and it looks like Randy Chrysler picked the right guys to stay on the floor in this second <laughs> half. Hard shot by Becker. Great pickup oh, and great man. body control by Harris to keep the toes outside the crease and make the hard fake, duck back and tuck it in as he's falling. Our photographer, uh, <laughs> Sealax photographer Tim Prothrow with a huge smile on his face talking about that one, just mouthing not bad. And that was, I well, would say, more than big, that. The big not smile. bad in the Great, Great Britain sense. The big smile usually means he's got a good picture to show us yes. later. Final score in Paris, 14-11 for Southwest as Niagara drops to 0-2 on the season. They almost took Durham to overtime here on Saturday, but uh, the last second goal to give the Turf Dogs the win. Well, 2.6 seconds. Chris Atwood, he's going to go to the crease, takes the shot, and Masters keeps that in front of him. Atwood taken out of the play hard. He gave a parting shot there to Ryan McCrory. And Atwood loves to get out in front of the goalie and wave the stick around, and it, it's not it's more than once or twice that we've seen him knock that pass, down, that pass down or pick it off, but he didn't quite get there in time, but keep an eye on that one as well. Ten on the shot clock here for the Turf Dogs as Gearin goes to the far side. They'll find Wasson up top. Wasson for McNulty. Back for Wasson to the far side again, ripping the shot. Matt Croak, it was just wide as he tried to beat the shot clock. Quick restart here. Ian Martin to Chris Atwood, and Atwood all alone with Masters. I thought I heard a double whistle, and a couple players just kind of yeah, stopped. I thought I heard a whistle too. But they allow the fast break to go. Gearin. Rips that shot off the right shoulder of Jake Henhock. Another one into the screen, and the Turf Dogs will set up. And Chris Atwood had a game here, either last year or the year before, where he had three breakaways and was stopped on all of them. I asked him afterwards, have you ever had three breakaways and been stopped? He's like, no, I don't usually get stopped. <laughs> there's, a, there's another one uh, where uh, Masters just had his number. 
Ian Martin, he goes to the far side. Three on three look here as Ty Thompson sees that one shoot off the shaft of the stick of Hogarth. As Ian Martin will now take it outside. Martin to the man on the crease. It's Montour oh. over top of Masters. Oh. oh, the pretty ones are coming out now. That's gorgeous. And I'll tell you, Durham needs to keep playing because it's not completely out of reach. We talked about how it would be possible. Montour, great control nine. with the stick. Taking that pass from Blue Hill. And Ian Martin, the crease, the, pardon me, the man who was up top. Yeah, it was actually, uh, the pass was coming directly from Ian Martin. And that's just beautiful stick control and, and again, body control by Tom Montour to dance on the crease. It's 13-8. Don't go away. Demons get the ball back after Patrick McRory saw early movement. So here's Von Harris. Look to go to the middle. Cuts back, and there's a wide open lane as Masters has to drop on top of it. Joe Miracle, he gets the stick up, and Pat him and Patrick McRory still going as now they tie up at center. No call as of yet as finally they do. And we'll see who they've got. Pardon me, it's not Patrick McRory. It's Rob Clofer, who's been feisty all night. <laughs> he couldn't believe he was getting the call. <laughs> it's funny because Miracle had oh, handed to the bench all the box already. Clover's still walking the other way, and I thought, surely they're both going after that uh, little scramble, but that struggle. It. We're going to take a look at this save by Masters, and he thought that one had gotten through him, and boy, we did not see him look behind him at all early in the game. <laughs> he was feeling everything, and now a few goals, and he starts questioning himself. Confidence such a big part of any game of lacrosse. Well, we've talked about that so many times as we're going to have a chance here for Ashton Jacobs if he can pick it up. He does as he's facing a wall of green, though, so we'll go for Ian Martin off the bench. Ty Thompson follows him to Jacobs <laughs> behind the back over the shoulder that Masters saves. The difference between guys who may be at this level and, and goaltenders especially who may be at the NLL level is just the short memory. Yeah, consistency and forgetting about when you give up a goal. Aaron Bold, one of the best in the business, oh, loves to talk about forget about that, go to your keywords, go to your words that focus you. Definitely a, a mind position, whereas the rest of it, you know, you can get, get over it with some physical feats, but so much of goaltending is in the mind. Here's Montour coming down with... 31 on the clock, a sub shot there rising over top of the net from Ty Thompson as Montour gets dropped. And I thought that was going to be a possession, but it's going to be a penalty as Shewell oh, yeah. can't believe it. 55 seconds left in the four on four. We go 24.3 left in the quarter. And the Durham Turf Dogs now in penalty shot territory. Well, Eric Shewell thinking it might just be a possession call as well, but that's a pretty direct cross check right to the back. You're going to see it. Right here, Tom Montour turns. Now, Shul's saying he turned into yeah. me, but he's turning to get the ball, and the cross-check is at the bottom of the numbers in the back and knocks him straight down. But it's two minutes. Well, and the other part of that, too, is there's there's no attempt to play the ball. Yeah. Ian Martin down into the corner. That's where Chris oh. Atwood is to the far side. That should be Torrey Van Every. That's his spot. But no, that's I Josh Becker. Yeah. Chris Atwood will get another point, his third. What are we at now? 13-8. Hold. 13-9. That's well, with yeah. that goal. Oh. And here it is. You can see, again, Ian Martin with the little pass. I was going to go behind the back. Then Atwood, just a nifty pass across. And there's nobody to pick up Josh Becker on the far side. And he's filling that spot because I don't think Tory Van Every is dressed anymore. Now, we're not sure whether Van Every got... Uh, was, yeah, was he, told to sit or if he was sent out because expulsion. he had five penalties. Right. They didn't catch it during the, the first half, but maybe they noticed it at halftime. Actually, we did see the timekeeper come out and call all three officials over oh, okay. at, at center, and then we saw Grant Spies come to the bench, which I think that may have that been the moment. that conversation. Ashton Jacobs now, he's heading down the far side. He looks like he's got an equipment issue.
Josh uh, or uh, Ashton Jacobs coming out of the Six Nations Rebels Junior B program, where they basically win the Founders Cup every year. Last year they didn't. The Aquasasni Indians did, left by Seth Oaks and Adam Bomber and some other outstanding players. But you know that's a great Junior B program, and Ashton Jacobs. He's a big, solid fellow. He likes to stick his nose in. We've seen that already, but he had the behind-the-back shot that looked pretty good there, and it shows you, you know, a lot of two-way players. Great Junior B program. How about a great everything program? Oh, yeah. Senior B, uh, Rivermen, our yep. President's Cup champions, as you said, perennial Founders Cup favorites. Minto, back-to-back Minto, Minto Cups for the arrows. And uh, the Chiefs, perennial Man Cup favorites. As the shot comes from the outside, everyone looks for the clock. Masters with the shot, bounces off someone's stick. It's Ty Thompson, does corral it, and that'll end the third period. 13-9, Daniel Escalaro on the far side. I believe he's got one of a young fan over there in the stands. Go ahead, Daniel. Hey, thanks, Matthew. Actually, it's not just a young fan, but we have a family right here. We have Jared, we have uh, McKenna and uh, Brianna over here, guys. So, uh, Jared, are you guys all uh, big lacrosse fans? A little bit. I've been to a couple games uh, here and there. It's our first one this year. All right. How are you guys enjoying uh, this game so far? I'm enjoying it a lot. All right. How about you, Brianna? It's really fun. Okay, that's cool. And I can see that you have the, uh, the shirt on. Yes. That's awesome. And uh, I heard you saying, uh, saying earlier you did win an, uh, a shirt yourself earlier. There we go. Jared, your prediction on the uh, final score as we head into the fourth. I'm going to go with uh, 16 to 11. Wow. Pretty bold. All right. So uh, thanks for uh, coming in. Thanks for uh, sticking around and supporting the uh, Durham Turf Dogs. And we're going to throw to a quick break, but we'll be right back with the fourth quarter action. Turf Dogs, 13 to 9 against the Us Weekend Demons. This is the JVI Sports Network. Demons on a run there in the third quarter. We switched ends one final time. It is last call inside the General Motors Center. Matthew Carrick, Steven Stamp, Daniel Escalaro, the talent team here this afternoon, <laughs> providing you this Canadian Lacrosse League matchup in week number two. Mike Triolo, a couple spins before firing, and Penhawk again way high. He was looking through the wickets, but it doesn't go. As Here comes Ian Martin, Oh, and Triolo had him lined up. And it's four straight goals for the Demons. It was 13 to five. It's 13 to nine now. And and Durham needs to kind of pay attention and get something sparked here. Triolo almost had a goal as Hanhawk did lift his stick up, but caught it. And Jesse Heron wants to make something happen. Lacrosse is such a game of momentum. We've said it mm -hmm. so many times. And if you're a team with the momentum, it's very easy to keep it. Very e hard to get it back if you're the team without it especially in a situation like this where the Demons are, it's within sight now. Here's Hopcroft. Becker with a last second swat had thoughts of picking it up, but then elects to let the 30 expire. Goes for Vaughn Harris, way over on the far side. Harris backing away from Rennie, the bounce pass there. Ian Martin misplayed it, it went back over Rennie. He had to pirouette a couple times looking for it. So it works out for the Demons as Ian Martin has it again. 10 on the shot clock. Martin straight to the cage. The shot and Masters goes down to meet that. Picked up by Vradenberg. Pete Rennie with a very active shift defensively for Durham there. Pardon me. I 
believe that's Hopcroft. It is. Him and Radenberg have those huge knee braces. There's Hogarth off the wall, diving and a goal. That puts an end to the four goal run. Patrick for Thomas Hogarth. And he's showing you, we talked earlier about how he's such a good defensive player. He actually played quite a bit of offense in minor lacrosse coming up and then kind of shifted to the defensive end. And he's showing you, he 20. has not lost his offensive chops. This is a nice play. There's Hopcroft, number 20 with the white helmet and a right-hander, not number 19 with the black helmet okay, and a left-hander. Okay. Sorry, I had to get that one in there. <laughs> <laughs> Hogarth with a nice move, diving and tucks it. Five hole on Jake Henhawk. Rennie came up with the face-off and then had to duck under the bridge of Atwood and now the body's starting to bang here for the Demons as they start to get a bit more physical and it's... Oh, I was going to say physical play that doesn't cross the line, but now Ashton Jacobs gets tied up there with, oh, big surprise, Rob Clover. Yeah, <laughs> Clover likes to get into things, but I'll tell you, he's, he's looking okay for his first game in this league. Well, and he hasn't gone to the box yet, so. Yeah, he has. Oh, well, he had that one, yeah, that's correct. The matching Sorry. penalties, yeah. yeah. He just pretended like he wasn't going to the well, box. At least he took somebody with him. That's If you're going to do it, that's how you do it. As Goddard spins and fires, and somehow that bounces off of Henhawk. And then Goddard taken down by one or both of the double team. Yeah, and uh, that was Atwood and Ashton Jacobs. And I'm not sure there was actually a violation against Goddard, but it looked like it could get nasty. And I think Spee's kinda, Grant Spee's kind of decided discretion the better part of Valor there. Patrick McRory's shot, that hit something, caused it to go sky high, and <laughs> Ryan McRory, I think, back the other way, I think did the smart thing there. It's going to be a holding call against Chris Atwood as he got body position and made no attempt to pick up the ball. And oh, he just grabbed McCrory by one, in one hand by the arm and spun him around, and at first one official was calling, just calling for the uh, possession foul, and, and coming in uh, was Mo from the far side. To, uh, to make the call. We're going to see it here. Atwood just grabs him and spins him right around and then taps the ball back. And Again, not, not too much question. And not, you know, Chris Atwood's so talented and can do so many good things on the cross floor, but he does take penalties like that one a long way from his net. That's oh, not we, a very good penalty. We heard the sigh. And yeah. there's usually the result as Guerin gets another opportunity and make it five, his second power play goal of the game. Count it four now for the Durham Turf Dogs as a team. Nine, 20. Yeah, five goals, 15. four assists. Jesse Guerin having himself a night. And this is, again, we saw him earlier with the shot from the outside. And here's another beauty. Just, uh, you know, the good ones, the great shooters have that ability to make the goal. They think they're going somewhere else. Guerin is a very good shooter. You forget it because he's such a good passer, but... I think, you know, you watch him and you see the slight build and the, you know, not very tall and things, and you think maybe a Josh Sanderson type, and you watch Sanderson from behind when he shoots, and you have no oh. idea where the ball's going. And it's the same thing with Jesse Guerin. That one hard may have been the bucket of Rennie, and he's slow getting off here. Just a light jog as he goes straight to the bench and straight down the tunnel. Looks like he's just going to check the gear and maybe the chops. Yeah, it didn't even go all the way down. He just went a couple of steps and has the helmet off. Bit of a breather as well as Triolo works around a couple picks. Takes the shot into the feet of Henho. Oh, oh that's a goal as garen has got the sock sixth. trick. Do you have your socks ready to throw? Um, I can get them ready real quick, trust okay. me. Jesse Guerin, as Ron Messer is announcing the last Nine goal, assisted. gets another one and this is just a beauty. We're gonna see that he just snags this ball and the shot there that bounces back out from Triolo and he uh, just pops it in and out. Gives the little point, so yeah, that's in. Six and four for Jesse Guerin. If you'd like to uh, comment on who you think should be the three stars, let us know at, uh, what is it? At JVI. At JVI video at c League. As long as there the we hashtag go. three stars is that's there, right. we'll be able to find <laughs> it. And, and, you know, Jesse Guerin's going to be the first star, so put him first if you want us <laughs> to pay attention to you. I'm, ju I'm just saying. <laughs> well, you don't like the Jake Lazor vote three times? <laughs> <laughs> I actually enjoy the Jake Lazor vote when he's not even dressed. But 
It's happened in the past. It's yes. not a knock on Jake Lazor. No, no, we like Jake. It's a knock <laughs> on whoever keeps tweeting that. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Now we've got Josh Becker in the face of somebody in front of the formerly dressed, now scratched Demons players. As here's Thomas Hogarth coming in, the sub shot. He's going for four. And I'll tell you, we, we talked about, you know, you, you don't want it to get out of hand physically or, uh, you know, any dumb plays coming from a team when they get down. And credit to us weekend oh. for working hard and credit to Von oh. Harris. Oh, what a goal. Von Harris, the work before the goal was beautiful. And then he goes for the low skipper that bounces up over the shoulder of Ryan Masters. Kind of jumped on your turf there, taking over the play-by-play. -play. But, I mean, it just flowed so naturally in the early. play. That is just... The assist going to Jake Henhaw, because that was all Vaughn Harris. You can see why. He was our Rookie of the Week last week. And let's just watch this as the ball is knocked loose by Hogarth. The pickup and the little swim move between the two players, and he just bounces it. And Ryan Masters just looks like, are you kidding me? The reaction from Masters said it all. I don't mind you jumping on my turf. It gave me a good seat for that one. I didn't have to do anything, just... Admire the beauty that was. Well, and it Ron looked like Ryan. Fourth. Sorry, it looked like Ryan Masters was saying, "Somebody check him." And I think the defenders for Durham were saying, "You give it a go." Yeah. <laughs> Here comes Atwood again as he tries to keep the run going. Atwood in the face of Mike Triolo, as those two have been going all game long. Not necessarily in each other's face, but they've been matched up. As now a couple dance moves, it comes over for Matt Croak. Looking far side. They elect to come back up top. Goddard off the bench. Maybe a bit of a grab there from Ian Martin. And the dive. Oh, oh they call him in the crease. Oh, the I want to see that again. Throw the flag. Goddard making a bid for his fifth. We gave Grant Spee some credit earlier. He was named the Sealax uh, ref of the year last year. Got a ring tonight. A beautiful ring. But I don't know about that one. Take a couple diamonds out of the ring. Oh, oh and, and it's the right the other end. swing. Kenny Aaron back the other way. It's 16-11. And I'll tell you, we want to see that one at the other end. We've got to look at the replay of the goal. But so does Matt oh. Giles. He's pointing to the video board. <laughs> this will be the first one, I think. Yeah, here we go. From our replay Dylan Goddard director. gets the ball, goes to the net. Oh, that's Woo! a goal. I like that one. I think it's a goal. Run it back, run it back. Who cares about the one at the other end? I think... Oh, oh, oh it's yeah. close, it's close. Oh. We need the overhead look at that one. I, now Goddard's going to try and get it. I didn't see <laughs> daylight. That's that's my call. Good point. I, if, if, I'm, if I'm doing enough to question an official that much, I, I want to see the blue daylight. Yeah, I probably wouldn't call it back. And, and there's a delayed penalty here, and then right in front of the lead official, Ooh. and then over on this side, another huge hit. The first one was Kyle Jamison. None of this. With the slash. None of this is the penalty. And who's down? The trainer quickly out. And Pete Rennie, who took the shot in the head earlier, has now taken a shot to the jaw and is holding his face. And Boy, he's having a tough game. One of the top defenders in this league, really establishing a name for himself. And a New England Black Wolves practice roster player. And down at the board at the other end is Ian Martin. He's getting looked like looked like held back. Now we're going to see the, the goal and by Kenny Aaron. Yeah, this will give us a chance now. The penalty was to Ian Martin, so he's going off with the trainer, and this is just a huge blast with a half skip. And Ryan Masters is finding that he's having a tough time seeing the ball, I think, because he's been putting his hands up in the air, which is usually what a goalie does when he doesn't see it. Over here, I got five minutes. Five minutes for rough or high stick, I'm not sure, but it is Patrick McRory going off, and that was, I think, the, the play here against Along the boards. Along the boards, yeah. But nothing to whoever was it was that dropped Pete Rennie. No, Ian Martin gets the slash as the first call, and then it's Martin that takes the big hit. Let's see what happened here. This is already after the first penalty has been called. This is Here's the, no the dive. Goal again. This is Let's the no see. goal again. See, I want to see daylight off, off the right yeah. foot. Dylan Goddard, buy some white shoes and you get yourself a goal there. Because yeah. it would have been too hard to tell. Oh, but look at Oh, is there space? You know what? 
Either way, I don't think you can overturn that. You can't blame Grant Spees. Yeah. As much as we said, hey, maybe you got that one wrong. If we can't tell in slow motion after watching it five times, we're not sure. And digitally zooming in and, and digitally everything else in, we yeah. can do up here. I'm going to take back my criticism of Grant Spees. Tom Montour is headed Gone. down the tunnel. Has he picked up something extra here? He, he wasn't part of the initial penalties. 16 to 11 with eight and a half minutes to go here in the fourth, and it's a five goal game. The Demons not out of it, but boy, can they not afford to lose probably their best player all over the floor and their captain with, uh, with that eight and a half minutes to go, and they're already short. The signal is four on four, so I imagine yeah. that's just, well, I was going to say a 10, but. Yeah, I haven't, yeah, I wouldn't go up on the board, so. Yeah, 832. I was wondering if he got a penalty in that, and that would have been his fifth, but I don't think he was close enough. But here's Atwood from the far side. He takes the shot. We are four on four. That'll be for the full two minutes as Ty Thompson now intercepts. Goes back to the crease for Atwood again. Thompson gets it back, and Masters goes down and holds on and waits for the whistle. Oh, Rennie got 10 minutes, and Montour got 10 minutes. No, Rennie didn't. Rennie's still on the bench. I think it was just Atwood, or just Montour. I thought they announced Pete Rennie 10-minute misconduct, but... Oh, well, he's on the bench. Okay. So if they did, they're not enforcing it very well. <laughs> <laughs> Official of the year down there on the floor. <laughs> but as, as I said earlier, or I was trying to say, didn't get my point across, is Hofgraf just beats the shot clock. Henhock with the save. The English on the ball keeps it this side of the restraining line. Clover back for Hopcroft. Well, Grant, finish it now. Grant Spees, when he came back into the league... Uh, Immediately started diamond guys. Just right. there were there were two and tens all over the place, and that's yeah. one of his trademarks. He doesn't take the talking back. As the turf turf dogs are going to play around with this ball here, as there's a shot at the nine second mark, and uh, I guess he's got a couple more culprits here. An early early exit for the turf dogs. They're going to go another man down here. Yeah. As they go five on four, as we play four on four, 26 seconds remaining in that situation as Ty Thompson, I was going to say got it back up top, but it's Chris Atwood coming over. Oh, he had the corner, and it was just high. We have a great angle from where we are to see that there was a little space there over the left shoulder of Ryan Masters, and Chris Atwood just barely missed it. I believe this is the official's timeout as well as we get the... Substitution penalty will sort, oh, he's going to say we'll sort that all out. The light was on, but there has been no signal. Looks like we're going to continue play. Stand by to Daniel Escalero. So the penalties are up. Chris Atwood with holding was the one before. So only Ian Martin for the slash and Tom Montour, a game of misconduct for 10 minutes. And, and now uh, Durham is going to take a timeout themselves, actually. And uh, they may argue that they want their timeout back because it should have been the official's timeout, but they'll be down four on three and want to just take a bit of a breather, I think. 14-11 was the final score over at the uh, Cellapse Community Center in Paris. The uh, Southwest Cyclops leading that one. Dan Kane scoring four goals. Jordan Dance scoring five. Three of them all back-to-back-to-back uh, -to -back -to -back near uh, the end of uh, the fourth quarter. Uh, this puts the uh, Niagara Lock Monsters at uh, or with a zero to two record, and uh, this will be the first win of the season for the uh, Southwest Cyclops. Again, final score: Southwest Cyclops 14, Niagara Lock Monsters 11 at the uh, Sill Apps Community Center earlier tonight, guys. And during the break. Um Chris Atwood was banging his stick on the board. It's not a frustration to me. He was trying to get the little bend that you like. some guys like in their stick. You can see he's giving a bit of a push, then a bang on the edge of the boards at the bench, just trying to get that twig just way. Like, you know, these shooters really fine-tune their sticks. And uh, Atwood, we'll see if he got it dialed in the way he wants because he did not like missing that top corner that we saw over the shoulder of Masters. We get the opportunity to be in the arena long before anybody except the mm -hmm. janitor, uh, usually before the lights are turned on. He's usually the first guy on the floor, and he'll try the bounce shot. He'll try the sub shot. He'll try to hit the post. He'll try the top corner. 
And if something's not right, he'll take a breather and restring. And any wonder why he's one of the top offensive oh. players. Oh, Masters, the pass. Oh, you got to bury that. Yeah. <laughs> That was almost as good as the pass he threw last week when he went sidearm to a oh. falling Hogarth at the other end of the floor. He tucked it in as he hit the dar as he hit the carpet. I still think our play of the game happened earlier on. Was it Dylan Goddard on his backside? On his side, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a lovely play early on. Yeah, someone's out of uniform on the bench. So whoever it was that got that 10 is uh, is now out of the game. Joe Miracle, anyways, for Ian Martin. Vaughn Harris in the corner for Atwood. As they come back to this side, the no look. Here's Miracle, the shot. And Pete Rennie over top. Joe Miracle rolls back in for Dylan Masters. Masters sidearms again all the way down the floor, and the goalies will play catch here with Henhawk. Five on three in favor of the Durham Turf Dogs. But in favor of the Oswegian Demons, pardon me, in the outside shot from Harris, rings off the pipe. Masters will cover up long enough for the whistle as we're 33 seconds remaining. And I just checked it was Eric Shule who actually, it was, I just checked it was Eric Shule who got the game misconduct for the Durham Turf Dogs, okay. number 55. So 15 seconds remains on the... Bench minor substitution penalty that took us into the officials' timeout. Ian Martin looking into the corner and running up was Jesse Guerin. Didn't realize it tipped right to Chris Atwood. Atwood's now got to play it off the glass as there's five seconds on the shot clock. Oh, bounces off the stick of Guerin. Masters there to cover up. Didn't realize that out of the box was McRory. McRory now on Vaughn Harris as Harris is going to corral it. Ian Martin. May have been a slight moving pick there as he goes for Atwood in the corner. Josh Becker back for Harris to Atwood on the crease to Blue Hill cutting in a couple fakes before it lands in the stick of Ryan McCrory. A sweet, great ball movement by the Asweekin Demons. But Blue Hill just not able, as he was earlier, second time he's been right on top and not able to finish it off. Final four minutes here. Final 30 seconds of the major penalty to Patrick McRory. 16-11 is the score. And Daniel interviewed the family in the stands. And it was his suggestion the final score would be 16-11. So I want to talk to that man because uh, Lotto Max draws tonight. <laughs> Big collision in the corner. Down the far side. Here's a sidearm shot from Vradenberg that gets through the legs of Henhawk. And, well, so much for the winning ticket. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Vradenberg getting on the board, making it 17 11. And there's Jake Henhawk. Not looking too happy down there. And, you know, anytime your team gives up 17 goals. That's tough. A nice little when play there. Th when there's three guys around the loose ball. Yeah, and Vradenberg just taps the ball between the legs of the Demons player, then goes sidearm and basically shoots it through Jake Henhawk. So, you know, again, you know, the goal is nice, the finish is nice, but it's the play at the other end of the floor as is so often the case that created that chance. And oh, oh. Kenny Aaron with the, the dish, and they couldn't finish. As the Turf Dogs will get the ball back here. They've put up 17 now in this game as the offense has come to play. It was a couple big runs in that first as Matt Croak now goes to Hopcroft. Up for McMahon. On the half boards, it comes back for McMahon. As they've got a bit of movement in the house and just be rolled to Hopcroft. <laughs> Rips the shot and beats the shot clock. I think Cody McMahon was just trying to roll that in the corner. He was waving everyone yeah. to come and change, and he was rolling it to the corner, and Hopcroft just let it fly. And that was Henry and Grant Spies getting into it now as Henry had the finger pointing everything going on behind those sunglasses. Ashton Jacobs 
Spinning shot there from Corey Thompson. That one off the backboards way over and back as that's going to go off the backboards at the other end. And, yeah, I guess the Durham Turf Dogs called timeout. And then now they discuss that they should have gotten their timeout back. As this is the official's timeout with 2 minutes and 17 seconds left in quarter number 4. And we're looking for the play of the game here. We're going to take a peek, and it is, you've been talking about it. it is the I first hope it's the right goal. one. I hope so. No, it's not. Not that one. No. No, the Durham goal. Come on, guys. No, I did not. That's not the play of the game. Hang on. We'll show it to you in a bit. And here I was about to credit the excellent work of Jeremy Hogle. I know, right? <laughs> Oh, uh, how disillusioning. Oh, finger pointing down on the floor, finger pointing up here too between uh, Jeremy and Alex Frazow. Jeremy, you'll get your shot on Sunday, all right? You direct the show. There we go. Got it. Now we've got out. it clear. Just in time to restart action down we'll on the floor. We'll have a chance. We'll have a chance. Two minute warning upcoming. 17 11 for the home side. And Jonas Dirks wanted a bigger lead. He got one <laughs> here today as it was a pretty much a momentum shift in that second quarter, an onslaught of goals for Durham as McNulty now comes over for oh! Hogarth. Oh! oh! Show that one. Yeah. <laughs> Forget it. Go back. Go that. That's the one now. It'll be easy to find. It just <laughs> happened. <laughs> Oh, that actually, <laughs> I'll tell you, that could be it, man. 371. Check, wow. Check Facebook, the Durham Turf Dogs Facebook page, as they name the Arby's Play of the Week every week. This could be it. And, of course, it could be Dylan Goddard. We'll... Oh. Oh, man. I, I go with the first one, actually. That Hogarth made it look better by falling down. But <laughs> uh, TV dive? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure who got the, the other assist because they announced it as 71, and... There's that's no Mc, 71 that's Jeff on the, McNulty. Okay, he's not on our list. That is McNulty. So we'll stay with the first one. We're making life very difficult for our crew. They, they also announced Triolo as now there's a bump on Masters and he's going to pile on top of Mike Miller, but it looked like Miller had help and Miller yeah. gets up heated. Miller's upset that Masters piled on and of course Clover's in the middle of that as he's been all day, but it looked like Clover gave Miller a little bit of help. Yeah, Clover, a graduate of the Barry Lakeshores program, one of the uh, you know junior A programs in Ontario that's producing some pretty nice ball players. And uh, Clover, good for him for making a Seelax team. Here we go on the replay, and you're going to see a little push from Clover. Actually, not much. I think it was Miller pretty much going in his own. Riley Campbell may be a bit of a shove, but I think Masters is right to be upset there. I was actually thought there was more contact from mm -hmm. Campbell's side than it was yeah. Clover to start with. And then of course Clover did get involved to protect his goaltender. He's got the ball now. I thought he was gonna head to the net, but if the uh, last few offensive possessions have been any indication, looks like Turf Dogs are in full rag mode here. And it's five seconds on the clock. It goes into the corner for Vradenberg. He was getting worked over from Kyle Jamison. <laughs> he looks to the yeah. official and goes, yeah, no off ball slashes, okay. Yeah. <laughs> And Grant Spies says there's 102 to play. Just go to your bench. Yeah. And Jake Henhawk does just that as the Demons will get go some Go for of the their, touchdown? Yeah, get some of their uh, extra attacker work in here as practices are at a premium here in Canadian Lacrosse League. He's not going to get a chance to come back as Thompson went to the wrong bench. And nobody caught it as of yet as he didn't actually get on the floor. It's not going to matter anyways as it is the icing on the cake for the Turf Dog goal. Yeah, Ryan McCrory just puts it in the empty net. You can see he was kind of debating with himself whether to put it in with an 18-11 to 11 lead. Now, one, one factor, you can hear somebody saying, go ahead, go ahead. One thing, it does come down at the end of the season to right. goals for and against when we look at tiebreakers. And, you know, those goals can be very important. And, 
it can make the difference between making the playoffs or not. Durham's looking very good right now, but it's going to be a battle for all these teams with five very good teams in the league, and, and that, I think, is why he puts that one in. I don't know if he's thinking about that directly at that moment, but it's why it's not a bad idea. Well, in no aggregate, like home and away or anything like that, but as we said earlier on for the Durham Turf Dogs, it's going to get pretty pretty vicious down the stretch. They've played three of their five home games already. Well, they will have tomorrow. At, at the end of this weekend. Yeah. Yeah, when you join us tomorrow at 2 o'clock as the Durham Turf Dogs play the Barry Blizzard, the defending champion Barry Blizzard, 2 o'clock, I'll have the call on Sealax TV 1. Then Sunday, Sealax Streaming 1 will also have the Barry home game against these Asweekin Demons at 2 p.m. Meanwhile, the Niagara Lock Monsters at 2 o'clock versus the Southwest Cyclops the on Sealax TV2. Rematch of our other game this yeah. evening. A reminder, you can go to the Sealax YouTube channel and watch we, the replay. Now we may be seeing the play of the game. Oh, oh, it's the right possession. Yeah. There it is, Dylan Conner. He's going to get go. knocked down. He's going to fall. He's falling to his knees and tucks it yeah. through. You thought he was on his back. He wasn't quite. He was kind of on his side, but beautiful goal well, by Dylan Goddard. He's in the motion of falling, which yes. I think is actually... Harder to do than being on your back. I'm just saying. So, more credit to Dylan Connor. Oh, it's for a great one. play. Yeah, no. Oh, it, my goodness. It, it's funny that in a game with 30 goals, 19 of them by the Durham Turf Dogs, the first we go back <laughs> to the first goal that was 33 seconds into the uh, into the game. And we're going to try and get an interview down on the floor. Shouldn't be too hard with uh, with these Turf Dogs. They're, they're the happy team. Yeah, <laughs> the demons might have been a little tricky to get somebody, but um, we're going to go with an interview. Daniel, you have to say his last name for me. Daniel Escalara. There we go, Daniel Escalara, and uh, he's uh, he's providing catering tonight. Filipino food. It's going to nice. be fantastic. Oh, I can't wait. That's <laughs> he's live heard. already. Go ahead, Daniel. Have your have yourself an interview. Just don't go behind the sign. <laughs> <laughs> while, while they get into position, our uh, upcoming games once again. Yes. You'll be back here. Uh, I'll be here tomorrow at 2 for Barry Blizzard. Durham and Barry. Sunday, 2 o'clock, Barry and Asweek and Barry. And 2 o'clock in Niagara, the Southwest Cyclops. And now we go to Daniel Escalaro. Attaboy. All Thank right. You. Thanks very much, guys. I have the first star of the game tonight, Jesse Guerin, number nine. Jesse, five goals tonight. Including that, how it served a shot in the uh, that last goal you had in the fourth. What was on your mind in that play? Um, just the, my teammates did a good job finding me and uh, saw a hole there. So lucky enough, I uh, was able to hit my spot, and it's just a good game. Good game by us. So. All right. What was your biggest takeaway you think for uh, for tonight's game, or even heading into tonight's game? Um, just to be smart out there, I thought we played a smarter game, eliminating their transition and capitalizing on our transition. So. It's a big game of momentum, and I think we had it for the most part. All right, and a short turnaround time between tonight and your next game versus Barry, still here at the uh, GMC. What do you think could uh, could be the uh, improvements, or what uh, should you uh, what do you think should you maintain? Um, well, we we got to enjoy this win for a little bit, but we got to start thinking about Barry. They won it all last year, so um, we have something to prove, and um, should be a good game. All right, second home game. And uh, still undefeated. Congratulations and uh, good luck tomorrow. That's uh, Jesse Guerin, the uh, first star in tonight's game. Five goals, three assists. Let's send it back upstairs for the three stars of tonight's game. Guys? Yeah. Spoiler alert. <laughs> well, yeah, what are you doing? We'll still take you through them as we've gone with number three, Vaughn Harris. It was all green all the way until about that third, third or fourth uh, quarter there. Vaughn Harris ends up with four goals on the night. And we were thinking Thomas Hogarth with four goals and an assist and good defensive play, but Harris, you know, I think one of the reasons he got it is because the Demons worked so hard with the Shoremen to try and get back in this game. you got to give him some credit. Our second star with a big night, three goals, three assists, which in a lot of games is going to get you a higher, you know, the number one spot, Dylan Goddard. And, uh, again, a great play, the goal of the game, and, and a pretty solid effort from him all around again tonight. Yeah, and then, of course, we turn our attention to the first star. Big surprise here. Thanks a lot to Daniel for spoiling the party. I mentioned it like 15 minutes ago. <laughs> so You mentioned it in the first quarter. I think that if your vote wasn't Jesse Guerin, we were going to uh, block you and ignore you and unfriend you. So it is Jesse Guerin as he continues his race to the top 
of the scoreboard. A huge and weekend in CLAX week number two. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, you know, Jesse Guerin doing interviews, probably not his favorite thing in the world, but <laughs> so uh, courteous to come out and do it. And he didn't even mind that Daniel Escalaro meant, said he had five goals. Didn't even point out that it was actually six goals with his four assists. There what a go. gentleman, Jesse Guerin. We'll be back on air tomorrow at 2 p.m. Stephen Stamp as the Durham Turf Dogs welcome the Barry Blizzard. They're flying high, looking to go 3-0 as we continue week number two of the Canadian Lacrosse League. Matthew Carrick for our JVI Sports Network crew and my partner, Stephen Stamp. We will talk to you tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen.